Today we are going to see Wednesday Netflix series season 1, before entering into the topic, please subscribe the channel for more videos, The Addams Family, created by American cartoonist Charles Adams, have had a long running up and down adaptation history in the years leading up to the release of Netflix's Wednesday. The first of which was known simply as The Addams Family and ran from 1964 to 1966 on ABC. That led to a telefilm called Halloween with the new Adams Family in 1977 and even an animated series unrelated to either of these properties produced by Hanna-Barbera in 1973. The franchise received a revival in the 1990s on the big screen, with The Addams Family, 1991, starring Angelica Houston and Raul Julia as Morticia and Gomez Adams becoming a huge hit at the box office. However, its 1993 sequel, Adam's Family Values, despite receiving a better critical reception, did not perform as well. These films inspired another Hanna-Barbera animated series, which ran from 1992 to 1993 and was set within the same universe, in the years that followed the theatrical films. The Adams Family received two reboots, the first of which came in the form of the direct-to-video film entitled Adam's Family Reunion, 1998, which received a short-lived television spin-off of sorts, The New Adams Family. The characters returned to the big screen in animated form many years later when The Adams Family, 2019, hit theaters and much like its live-action adaptation counterpart, made gangbusters amounts of money, the 2019 film grossed $203.7 million against a budget of $24 million. As you might expect based on that success, a sequel, The Addams Family 2, was released in 2021, my exposure to the franchise largely stems from limited reruns of the 1964 series, the 90s films, and whatever I could find on dial-up internet related to the original cartoons that were published by Charles Adams mostly in The New Yorker. I do not hold the same fondness for the films directed by Barry Sonnenfeld in the 1990s as most of my generation. Some elements, particularly Christina Ricci's performance as Wednesday Adams, do hold a special place in my heart, but to me those films were just okay. However, I do not consider the 1964 television series to be a perfect adaptation that cannot be surpassed either, even if it was utterly fascinating to my young mind, when a series focusing on Wednesday Adams was announced to be coming to Netflix. I naturally was curious, especially with acclaimed director Tim Burton, who has a knack for supernatural comedy, on board as a producer and even slated to direct a few episodes. My responses to Burton's work have been haphazard, but my thought was that if anyone could re-inject life into these characters and their world, it would probably be him. There was also the chance that this latest project of his would crash and burn, putting the final nail in the Adams family coffin, at least for me. Imagine my shock when I discovered that along with series creators Alfred Goff and Miles Miller, who co-create the Superman prequel television series Smallville, Tim Burton has managed to successfully bring Wednesday and members of her eccentric family into the modern age with Netflix's Wednesday, 2022, Wednesday focuses on the titular character, Wednesday Adams, Jenna Ortega, as a high school student at Nevermore Academy, home to various supernatural beings. Wednesday must learn to master her budding psychic powers. Deal with a monstrous killing spree impacting the nearby town of Jericho and solve a decades-old mystery with ties to her parents, Gomez, Luis Guzman, and Morticia Adams, Catherine Zeta-Jones. If that is not enough, Wednesday must also navigate perhaps the most terrifying thing of all, relationships with her peers and instructors at Nevermore. Before anything else, there's one thing that Netflix's Wednesday series absolutely had to get right to be successful. That would be the casting of one Wednesday Friday Adams, not only because many consider Christina Ricci's version of the character from the 90s Sonnenfeld films to be iconic, but also because you are building this entire series around this character. If this latest version of Wednesday had been miscast, the series likely would have been an absolute disaster. The pressure was on Fiona Weir. Who oversaw the casting of Wednesday to get this right and once you have seen the cold open of episode 1, it will become undoubtedly clear that we're nailed it, Jenna Ortega, who has been on a tear in 2022, starring in films like Scream, The Fallout and X, among others, 
is incredible in the role. She does not try and copy what has been done before, but instead takes her own approach to bringing the gothic teen to life. Ortega's monotone voice and piercing eyes pair well with the tiny details such as her pale complexion on screen and the fact that her version of the character does not blink often, which makes her appear lifted right from those original The New Yorker cartoons. In Wednesday, the character seems to take a more sadistic pleasure in everything dark and creepy, with her some of her biggest smiles emerging during incidents that would terrify normal people. She's also fiercely protective of those very few people that she chooses to let in. I use the term let in loosely because Wednesday is still very cagey and emotionless, something that Ortega brings to the screen in a way that is not too corny, the creative team and Ortega have worked to create an inquisitive version of the character. One with various hobbies and skills, and a charm that makes her frustrating, understandable, and nearly impossible to not root for. Without Ortega in the titular role, Wednesday would be nowhere near as wonderful as a series. Her performance is part of what makes this Netflix original that should only appeal to teenagers reach over that aisle and become something that reminds older, more nostalgic audience members like myself how interesting the world and characters of the Addams Family can be when done right, so, I've mentioned that this story veers towards a teenage audience, but in all honesty, I found this narrative more compelling than something like Riverdale, even as a 27-year-old. This coming-of-age supernatural horror comedy can get a little predictable at certain points. But it is not the worst thing in the world. You can sort of feel the Smallville influence from Goff and Miller, who put a focus on finding out just who Wednesday Adams is, while also introducing audiences to the new world-slash-setting filled with familiar characters-slash-elements, as well as new additions. Rather than a villain of the week format like Smallville, Goff, Miller, and the creatives behind Netflix's Wednesday introduce a supernatural mystery, one that unfolds as the character of Wednesday Adams discovers more about herself. Her family, her powers, and the world of Nevermore Academy, I was honestly impressed by how well they blended the mystery with Wednesday's coming-of-age journey. Part of the mystery is just dark enough without going over the edge, and it makes sense that Wednesday would be fascinated by a monster going on a killing spree. The other half of it, which revolves around Gomez and Morticia Adams, is good enough to set off the detective in Wednesday and the audience. As things move along on both ends of the mystery, you will see our protagonist and some of the characters around her grow, how do you do a coming-of-age story centered on Wednesday Adams? By putting her in a place where she does not exactly have an advantage. The world of Nevermore Academy is just as dark as Wednesday herself because it is filled with supernatural beings. She no longer has the advantages that she would have in a normal high school, everything and everyone around her is mostly just as bizarre as she is. How she deals with that, and then solves the mystery that appears, makes for a more compelling story than seeing Wednesday interact with normal people for an entire season. This new setting and mystery give the character a better opportunity to come of age in a way that we haven't seen before. Audiences are so used to seeing Wednesday and her family interact with normal people. But we have not seen them really deal with something as unique as they are. That's not to say we don't see elements of satire, and others finding Wednesday bizarre or frightening, those are still present in Wednesday. Think of this narrative as sort of a best of both worlds, one negative of the story is that there are characters that I struggled with caring about. Say what you want about Riverdale, but at least when I watched that show, I always cared about the characters no matter how ridiculous the story got. Caring about Wednesday's peers, like Bianca Barkley, Joy Sunday, became a chore when they weren't involved with the main mystery or helping to further Wednesday's development. This is not the fault of actors like Sunday, who does an excellent job in the role, but her character's side plot just comes out of nowhere in a critical episode and is pushed aside just as quickly, at least for now. You cannot just underdevelop characters and then give them a side plot out of nowhere, it harms the overall experience. And Wednesday has multiple cases of this issue, along with some dropped plot threads. I took little interest in Xavier Thorpe, Percy Hines' wife, as well, he has minimal traits and his arc is incredibly predictable to say the least without diving into spoilers. 
That's a shame because I enjoyed Heinz White in Fox's television series The Gifted. Another negative is that even if the mystery is compelling, it can get a little predictable. I would have appreciated it if the writers had taken a few more risks to set the mystery apart. The overall narrative and mystery start off so well, by setting the character of Wednesday in a different space than we have ever seen her in, but at certain points it feels like they were trying to play it safe. At the very least though, I was mostly satisfied with where Wednesday season 1 ended, and especially with Wednesday's overall arc. The character in Wednesday that I love as much as Wednesday Adams and the one that has the most thought-out arc is without question Enid Sinclair, Emma Myers, Wednesday's roommate. Enid is the ideal person to pair with Wednesday, even though on paper these two could not be more different. She's a cheery and friendly werewolf, and Wednesday obviously clashes with her at first. Seeing their friendship grow is one of the most rewarding things about season 1 and I'll be honest, when Enid first appeared. I was right there with Wednesday in a state of loathing her. However, as I learned more about the character, I found myself growing fonder of Enid and I loved her interactions with Wednesday. That's the end. Thanks for watching the full video. Hope you love this video. Please press the like button and give your comments about this video, and we'll upload videos regularly so don't forget to subscribe our channel. Give your suggestion about next topic in comments section. Meet you in next video. Bye bye.